right, hello wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday and you know, some of the events we do at the store just amazes me. Eight people at this event, man. And what an incre incredible lineup of wines for $75. Hey, I'm not disappointed. As long as I had six people, I was opening up all 10 of these bottles of wine, man. I don't got anything better to do on Friday night. And to me, it's valuable research that we're doing here at the Wine Watch. And I'd like to see how three vintages of these single vineyard Barbarescos are showing uh, the Venotu and the Anata from one of my favorite wineries, Pellicero, Giorgio Pellicero. We've done many events with him through the years. He wasn't here this evening, but uh, we did have a Gary Long uh, rep from Vinifera. And one of the few distributors that you can get old vintage wines by the case. All these wines still available by the case, except the 2004 vintage. All right, well, we started out with a little Barbera de Alba Tulin, and uh, this is the darkest colored wine on the table and really big black cherry, blackberry fruit, black truffles, licorice spice, really intense, even bigger on the second day, plump and ripe fruit, really round with layers uh, of that spice and that earth coming through on the finish. Some tannins here also, quite large for a Barbera. Barbera, I'll bet you could age this one for 10 years easily a great example of Barbera. $33. The Pellicero Langanibiolo, the entry-level wine, which I'll tell you, the entry-level wines, the Langanibiolos, man, are getting to be outstanding for the price. I remember it was hard to find Langanibiolos. It seems like everybody's making one now, and they just keep getting better and better. Maybe it's the vintages. 2011, a great vintage. The only problem with it is it followed 2010. 2010, superior but I don't know, 11, this wine is just juicy, really forward and seductive red cherry pie fruit, light smoky campfire wood kind of aromas, rose petals, red licorice, just delicious juicy fruit, smooth tannins, really nice freshness. You know, Nebbiolo, when it's this young, can be a little caustic, uh, very, very tannic and a great vintage, but it's just simply delicious. Hard to put this bottle down once it's open. The Barbaresco Nubiolo, a new wine from Pellicero. It's made of six different vineyard sites, and that light smoky aroma like you had in the, uh, in the Nebbiolo is still here, not as pronounced, some dry rose petals. This wine just had a lot more of everything else, red cherry fruit, uh, really thick and viscous on the tongue, exotic oriental spices, rose petals, just your classic Barbaresco. In 2011, a lot of ripe fruit here. And one of the best values we'll find in the Barbaresco DOCG. This wine scored the same score that Gaia's Barbaresco did from uh, uh, The Advocate, 94 points. They got a vote for first place this evening. Not a dog on the table, though. This was a tough competition. The tens. Well, he didn't show well. You know, of all the tens we've had, I think the Barolos um, have some charm to them, and they're, they're somewhat showy, even though they're young. For some reason, these two Barbarescos a little bit closed. And Giorgio Pellicero's got 40 hectares of vineyards, 15 of them in Barbaresco. He's one of the larger producers here, but still makes a dazzling uh, display of wines. And uh, this wine also exotic, floral notes, really lovely white truffles, dark spices, a good deal of fruit here, but really tightly wound, really big and chewy, lots of tannins. The Venotu had more floral notes to it, and the Tulin, to me, had more earth and more tar kind of and truffle notes to it. But uh, both of these wines are most excellent. They just need time. The, the, neither of them want to kind of vote for first or second, and I can see why, because the 7 Venotu was rocking. This is a forward vintage. 07 is a vintage you can drink young, uh, open it up, gorgeous red and black cherry fruit, an array of spices, white truffles, dried floral notes on the nose, plump red cherry berry fruit, uh, really silky tannins, uh, definitely the best drinking of all the old three, and, and the youngest. A real crowd pleaser, and uh, well, this wine seemed a little light next to the 04 and the 01. You could keep it for 10, 20 years easily. So I got a vote for second place this evening and uh, a lot of honorable mentions. The 04 Venotu, wow, a classic vintage. These 04s are still young. This wine needs a time, a bit of time to open up. Better on the second day, but maybe even a third day. A bit of kind of smoked meaty notes, black spices, truffle-like earth notes, and that black cherry fruit. Big and chewy on the tongue still. Lots of tannins. Very youthful. A nice hand of spice on the finish. And uh, still big and chewy. I wouldn't open this wine up for another 10 years, man. A big hit this evening, though. Three votes for second place. Making it a crowd pleaser. The 01, though. Wow, what a great vintage. This wine is killer, man. Just starting to drink near its peak. So concentrated. So rich. Lots of black spice, tar, truffle, potpourri of dried flowers, uh, dark cherry fruit. Still quite, tan it's got a lot of tannins here. This wine's, I mean, uh, very, very big, but just a lot of fruit, a lot of everything, man. This wine, very well balanced. The wine of the night, three votes for first place, two votes for second, killer juice. The Anata, and uh, this wine is uh, now called Tulin, and uh, we had just two vintages of this wine, the 99, 97, and uh, 99 was 
Still big and powerful on the nose, an array of that dark earth, smoked meat, dark cherry and plum fruit, black truffles, really nice complexity here, man, a great vintage, lots of structure, the 99 is still showing some tannins here, but starting to mellow out. I would give this wine another five years, and you could keep it for another 20 uh, before I tried it again. Got a vote for first, and got a lot of honorable mentions, third place, and uh, the Barbaresco Anata 97, wow. Uh, very exotic bouquet here, smoked lunch meat, oriental spices, dark berry fruit, truffles, even more complex on the second day. I think one of the best bouquets of all the wines on the table. The tannins are very silky and round. This was a warm year and a year that got 100 points on the wine spectator. Oh, I'm sorry, 2000 got 100 points, but it was one of those years like 2000 where they touted it because the wines were so showy at a young age. And Barbara Nebbiolo can be a little caustic when it's young, a little tannic. But this wine really drinking beautifully right here. An array of that smoked meat, oriental spice, and truffle notes through the finish. Still a lot of nice cherry fruit. Two votes for first place, two votes for second, putting it right on the heels of the 2001 Venotu. Well, hey, you know you're always going to get extra wine watch, and you're wondering what the hell this Amaroni's doing up here. Well, Gary Long wanted us to try this. The 2005 Monte Faustino Reserva, and, uh, you know, what is the difference between Amarone and Amarone Reservo? Well, it's a selection of the best barrels. Not made every year, only made in great vintages. And it's kind of perplexing to me that Quintarelli didn't make a Amarone in 2005 and Monte Festino made a Reservo. Well, um, you know, I guess they had a really good vintage because this wine is most excellent, man. It is sweet red cherry pie, milk chocolate, smoked meats, dried flowers, really rich bouquet. And on the tongue... Lovely viscosity, just really uh, smooth, round tannins. One of the things I love about Amarone, you can drink them young. The tannins, because they dry the grapes, polymerize, and uh, they just don't have the harsh tannins usually, even when they're released. Array of that uh, milk chocolate and really multi-layered and just a long finish. Sweet, but still balanced. This wine's got wonderful acidity and uh, $150 a bottle, man. It better be most excellent. That's what we had to drink at our Pellicero tasting. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember... Always drink the good stuff first.